Okay, so let's continue our exploration into rhythm. We're now going to be looking at one of my favorite techniques, which is utilizing polyrhythms in the track. So a polyrhythm very simply is two different rhythms playing simultaneously. And we're going to be making one of our rhythms different by changing the length of the loop that it's cycling over. So at the moment, we've got four eighths for our art. If we duplicate that out, obviously it works perfectly across a full bar, eight eighths, and it sounds like this. And it's fitting just right all the time with a percussion that's also looping over a bar. It's a two bar loop, but both halves of that two bars are the same. So technically a one bar loop doubled. And then obviously the kick drum, which is just our standard four to the floor. So the fun comes in when we stop this from looping over the bar perfectly. So let's say instead we had a three note chord like this. So if I just bring these in, this is obviously just our standard root triad. And now we loop this over perfectly in line with itself, like so. So what you can see is the first time it loops, it's still sitting within our bar, but the second time we get a note spare. And let's continue. So let's have a listen to this now. So you can hear how the two rhythms, although it's literally the structure of it is exactly the same, it feels like it's almost drifting out of time. It's a very, very interesting kind of phenomena that you hear. So if we have a look at this, the first bar starts on A, the second and uh, finishes soy on E. The second starts on C, finishes A, then we go E to C. And then finally, by the time we get to that third repeat, it is exactly the same as the first. But it still doesn't even fit properly in the four bars. As a four bar loop, it doesn't go well either. So what happens is it's trying, or it rather it naturally wants to move on to the C. You can see this just copied over. But instead, I'm forcing it after the fourth bar to jump back and reset. So instead of going to C, it goes to A, and that's what gives us this little jump at the end. Which is a nice little touch. And you can just set up a polyrhythm like this. You could even have this looping over a bar, not strictly a polyrhythm, but you'll get something more interesting than you would have done if you'd have just had, for example, the, the four note arp. It kind of, I guess it is a polyrhythm, but it's really, it's not being allowed to run. So you're not getting the full effect, you know, it's only when we let it out for, you know, four bars, eight bars, 16, you can have this rolling on for as long as you want it to. Now with not obviously limited to going with three notes, let's take a big bunch of these out now. And let's try putting some other notes in here. Let's go for a five note arp. So let's bring that B back in that we were using and maybe we'll have that C. Let's have a quick listen. That will be fine. Let's have a listen. Now this is going to be even more obvious. I actually prefer this when you go with a slightly longer loop length. So a look, I think we've gone past our five bars comfortably. Let's have a listen now. Still get that little jump at the end as well. Sounds super cool. So I absolutely love using this and you can get some really nice, constantly interesting without having to do too much work, arpeggiations or other melodic patterns because it's doing the work itself. It's almost constantly reinventing itself bar in, bar out. Now, the other thing to remember is you can, of course, combine this with with anything that's gone before, you know, moving the notes or any of our additional rhythmic ideas. So there's no reason that we couldn't come in here. Let's just get this. I don't know. Let's try this. No idea what we've got. Let's move that back. It's kind of interesting. Let's see what that sounds like. So 
So just adding a little bit of delay there to help smooth it out. It was a touch too jerky for my taste. But straight away you can see we've started with the most vanilla ARP going right at the top of this series on the arpeggiations. And the end result is with a couple of little tweaks, you've got something so much more interesting. So next up, we'll look at another one of our fundamental principles of, of uh, melody, and that's going to be dynamics.